This is part 11 of a series on building a full stack web application using Spring Boot and React, where you get to watch every line of code being written and a full app built from the scratch step by step. If you're new, start watching from this video. Okay, we have styled the team page and now it's time for us to style the match details page. Well, actually, without our knowing, we have ended up styling the match detail page, okay? And uh, let me show you. So what did we do? We went to, the URL was uh, localhost 3000, the team name slash matches slash year, right? Now notice, we have kind of styled it, right? So we now have, since we use the same match detail card, we essentially have uh, this styling already available. But now there is one more thing that we need to do, and it's not related to styling. It's a UI element that we need to add, which is the ability to switch between years. So right now I'm showing uh, the match uh, details for Delhi Capitals for the year 2020, but I don't have the ability to switch to another year, right? I can of course change the URL, but that's not ideal. We wanna have like a UI control to change the year. And what I wanna do is put that thing over here on the left-hand side, like a list of years, and then have the cards be a little bit on the right. The year selection is gonna be a small one. It's not gonna take up a lot of space, but then uh, most of the space is gonna be taken by the, the match details controls, okay? So how do I do this? How do I split? Again, grid to the rescue. I'm gonna make this a grid, okay? So I'm gonna go over here to the match uh, page component. Uh, let me close all this stuff. What do we have in Untitled? All right, so it's this thing. We know what we are trying to do. If we have achieved this, I'm gonna close this file. Okay, now we're gonna go to the match page over here. I'm gonna create a CSS file. An SCSS file, rather. And my match page has the match page selector. So I'm going to use that match page selector. Now, what do I need to do to make this a grid? All I need to do is basically a display grid, okay? And uh, we have how many rows and how many columns do we need? We basically need two columns, right? One is for selecting the year. The second column is for selecting the, for, for the, these cards that you're seeing over here. How many rows do we need? Well, we don't need to specify the rows in the grid. We essentially need just one row, right? The first row is gonna be for, uh, the, the only row is gonna be for the, you know, the year and then this component. This component is gonna take a, a long height, right? It's gonna go for as many cards as there are matches, but they don't need to have grid rows. The grid essentially needs to have just two columns and one row, okay? So I'm gonna put grid template columns is gonna be two. I'm gonna put, uh, let me put this one FR, one FR to show you what I'm actually gonna do, right? This is not gonna be what I'm actually gonna do. So I'm gonna put grid template rows as one FR, one FR and grid template columns is just gonna be one column, okay? Now what happens if I save this? Well, I am going to, let's see if I'm running this. I am running this, I probably not imported the CSS file, let me import this here. Import dot slash match page dot CSS. Now you notice basically all these divs have been split into these uh, two columns, okay? Which is not what we want. So what I'm gonna do is put all of these things into one div. So all the individual things that are rendered as a match detail card, all this needs to go into one div. So I'm gonna surround this with one div. So it is going to treat this whole contents inside this div as belonging to one cell in the grid. And now all these are gonna go over here, right? So this, since this is one div and this div is the immediate child of the grid, it is gonna say, okay, something is gonna be over here and something else is gonna be over here. Now we don't have anything, uh, well, we have the match page H1 over here on the left-hand side, which is why this thing is coming over here. And then we have this div, which is on the right-hand side, which is why this is going, going over here. If I were to put this over here, then the whole thing is gonna be on the left, column and then the right column is gonna be empty. What I do need over here is a, a year selector over here, right? It's class 
name equals year selector. And now the year selector is going to be on the left and this match page and the cards are going to be on the right. You see this? The year selector is currently empty. Now what I'm going to do is create a component for this year selector. Okay, I'm going to go to components here and then I'm going to call this year selector.js. And uh, I'm going to copy just this part. And uh, let me expand this to make this easy for you to read the code. Now, what I'm going to do is show the available years for which we are showing the data and have the user be able to pick from one of them, okay? We know from the data set that the data that we imported via CSV was from 2008 to 2020. So I have that bound. I don't want to have this be an API call, uh, but at the same time, I don't want to hard code this as well. One thing I can do is uh, put this in like an ENV file and read from that ENV file. I think that's the best option because anyway, if I have to add another year, it needs a code change, right? I'm gonna have to put the CSV in there. That time I'm gonna go update the ENV file and then deploy it. All right, let's do that. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, an ENV file is something that you can put in your uh, in your React root folder, right over here, right, front end. I can create a file called .env and then I can set constants over here, kind of like Spring Boot properties where you can set constants which your Spring Boot application looks up. With React, you can also set these constants over here. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna set like a, a start year and end year in my env file and then kind of look that up, okay? So for it to work in React, you're gonna have to prefix this with React uh, app underscore, React underscore app underscore, and then you can put whatever you want over here. I'm gonna call this data start year. And uh, this is, I think, 2008. And then I'm gonna put data end year. And this is 2020. As of recording this video, once this year's um, competition is done, we are hopefully gonna get the updated data on Kaggle. We're gonna import it, and then I'm gonna bump this up to 2021 and so on for as long as this application is gonna live, okay? So we have these two constants. Now I can access them in my year selector component. Uh, let me first import React. So that we know it is a React component. Okay, now here I can do states, but I don't wanna do states. This is fairly lightweight. So I'm going to um, basically loop through a static array of years and then render uh, like a list of years. I think that should do. Okay, let me do this. Let years equals an empty array. And then um, I'm gonna get the start year and end year from the env file, right? What's the start year? It's this guy here. I'm gonna do const start year equals uh, process.env. So whatever we save here uh, in the env file is gonna be available as a process.env constant, okay? Whatever you put over here. And uh, similarly, I'm gonna get this one as well. Uh, const end year equals process env data end year. Okay, so now I'm gonna just populate this with, uh, with those years. So I'm gonna do for, no, start year. I less than or equal to end year. I plus plus, we're gonna do the good old for loop. I'm gonna do years dot push off i. Okay, and um, now that I have this, I can return like a list, okay? So I'm gonna return um, basically years.map of year to, let's say I do like a, just an H, it's, it's H4. Okay, just to show you what's going on over here, right? So I just do test over here. Now let me save this guy. And now I go to the match page 
And uh, in my ear selector, I just do ear selector and it is going to show that thing over here. All right, since it's an ENV file, I'm gonna have to restart the application. Any changes to ENV means you're gonna have to restart your server. Okay. Now, if you were to look at this guy here, you see I get tests so many times, right? In these many years. Okay, so what I wanna do is uh, basically create like a, like a list, okay? It's gonna be an ordered list. And this is a practice that you would uh, normally do if you are rendering something which is a list of things, list of something, you basically need to create a list HTML element, right? It's called semantic HTML. You want to pick the right semantic HTML. And in this case, rather than just a list of devs, I'll choose a list and then style it accordingly. So I'm going to this, oh no, not this one. Over here, I'm going to do a list element, and this is gonna be wrapped inside a ordered list, right? Because this is an ordered list. So I'm gonna put this over here. Inside the list element, I'm gonna create one for year. Okay. This is of course the JavaScript portion, so I'm gonna have to put curly braces. All right, so now I have this over here. Why is it showing here? Oh, this has to be curly again, because I want this to render the year value and not hard-coded year text. Okay, so I'm getting this now. Now what I need to do is make this be a link so that when I click on it, it is going to change the URL accordingly, okay? It needs to change the URL accordingly, in which case, I need the team name, okay? I need to get the team name. So I'm gonna accept team name as parameter. I need to because I need to render the URL, all right? Team name equals, what do I call it, it's team name. Okay, and uh, in my ear selector, I'm gonna use the team name to render the link. Okay, I'm gonna import link from React Rotterdam, and I'm gonna use the link over here. So it's basically going to be, let me actually break this down here. So I can do it in multiple lines, makes it easier to read. Yes. You use the, you use the parentheses so that it's, uh, you can split the JSX into multiple lines, okay? Makes it easier for you to use that split across multiple lines. So this is going to be still going to be a list. But inside this list is not a hard-coded year. It is going to be a link. I'm gonna say link and then uh, link to equals, well, this is gonna be a rendered URL. I'm gonna make this, let's say backtick. It's gonna be slash teams slash the team name that we have pulled in. in the backtick dollar parent curly brace syntax slash matches slash and then the year for which we are rendering this thing. So I'm gonna put a dollar over here. So it's gonna be the two, and then um, here. And then the year is going to show up inside the link, and then the link is gonna close it, okay? So basically what I'm doing is instead of hard coding the year directly over here, I'm making it a React router link. And what is that link gonna go to? The link is gonna go to team slash team name slash matches slash year. We didn't have the team name with us because we need to know like for what we are rendering this list, right? So we don't have the team name. So I got the team name as an attribute here. So now I can render with the right, well, of course, once I fix, once I fix the syntax. Okay, so this ends here. Now I'm going to close and then close the curly. Hopefully this will work. 2008, 2009. Okay, it doesn't seem to be changing anything. So I'm guessing it is the same problem with the match. It is making calls and it is not uh, updating. Okay, 
I might have had uh, an, an infinite loop over here. Let's see if it's actually doing an infinite loop. If it is the case, well, I'm very sorry. I seem to have not noticed it. Let's see. No, it's not an infinite loop because I have put a square brackets over here. So it just happens when the component loads and it does not make a call after. Well, we wanted to make a call when either the team name changes or the year changes. So I'm going to put both of them in this array. Okay, so when either of them change, this has to update and make a call. So now, if I were to change this, well, now it is changing and getting for the right year. Okay, perfect. Seems to be working well. Of course, this looks bad. It looks bad because I have split the screen into two halves. This thing doesn't really need a full half. So I'm going to change that. I'm gonna go to the match page. Instead of this being one FR, one FR, I'm gonna make it like one and three, okay? Make it one FR and three FR so that this becomes bigger. Even this is too big for this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna make one FR, four FR. It's basically creating a fraction, okay? So this is one and this is four. So this is basically one fifth of the screen, right? Let me actually make it one sixth of the screen and see, yeah, this is probably the best that we have over here. Okay, now I can style the year selector so that it looks better. Uh, maybe before I do that, I'm going to style this and make it a little left aligned, right? In the match page, the year selector is going to be a little left aligned. So I'm going to do dot year selector align self is going to be end. Whoa, that's not what I want. I think justify self. I always end up confusing between the two. I don't think I still understand how this works. Okay, so this is better. And then I'm gonna put some padding here. Padding is maybe 20 pixels. Okay, this is much better. Now I am going to go over here to the match page and then add a heading over here, H3, select, year okay so that people know that this is selectable okay and over here i am going to style the bullets right i don't want the bullets i don't want the numbered bullets so i'm going to change that All right so i'm going to make this class name equals years list and then i'm going to create an scss file year selector dot scss and i'm going to make the actually let me call this year selector because this is the top node of this component so it should have the same name as the component don't you think okay so i'm going to make this the text align is going to be right Align is going to be right. Well, that didn't do anything. Well, I'm going to have to change the, the blitz. List style type is none. So don't, don't put these numbers over here. We don't want that for the style. And then, of course, I think I have to import it. Your selector dot CSS and make sure I spell this right. Selector dot CSS. Okay, this is much better. Now I have the links over here. Maybe space this up a little bit so that it's easier to separate and click. Um, I'm gonna make li the link, the list item within it have margin bottom be i don't know 10 pixels should do should make it spaced out let me actually make it margin top 10 pixels as well so it is double 
and also spaced out. Perfect. So this is good. Uh, maybe add a little bit of a gap between these two. Well, there are a couple of ways in which I can add the gap. I can either add padding and margin and all that stuff. Or since this is a grid, I can do like what I did here, where I add the column gap. I'm basically just going to copy this and add this to the match page as well. I'm going to have a column gap this time of 20 pixels so that it really stands out. Okay, this is perfect. Now I can choose each individual year and get whatever uh, we need for that thing. Okay, and of course, I can choose one of these teams and then look at that. Now, of course, one thing that's left is the more link. This is not going anywhere. What I want to do is have the more link go to the latest. Okay, so the, basically the newest uh, year that we have. If there's nothing there, that's fine. So for example, in the previous one, uh, if you go to the, you know, go to Pune Warriors slash matches slash 2020, you will notice that there is nothing there. Okay, this is probably, this probably warrants a, uh, maybe a PR to fix like how this is rendered. Maybe I'm going to file this as a bug and you know, you can feel free to take that on if it hasn't been done yet. But what I want to do for now is basically get the team page to contain a more link. It already has a more link, which doesn't go anywhere. But I wanted, what I wanted to do is when I click on it, it needs to go to matches slash 2020 or the latest year for which we have the data. So I can do that fairly simply by going to the team page .js. Here is the more link. This is going to be a link again. So I'm going to um, basically do this. I'm copying this just for reference. I'm going to tweak that. I'm lazy to type the whole thing. I'm just going to put this over here. First, I need to import link from React Router DOM. So I'm going to add link over here. And then what is this link going to be? This is going to link to slash team slash team name slash matches slash year. What's the year? Well, the year is this guy, right? The latest year for which we have the data. Okay, so I'm going to put that there and I'm going to file a bug for you to fix what happens when the team doesn't have data for the year. For example, Pune Warriors, the team doesn't exist anymore, so it won't have data for the latest year for which the IPL runs. Now, what are you going to do? Well, that's a bug that you can try fixing. Okay, so I'm going to put uh, this thing over here. Um, process dot env dot this. Okay, and uh, there's going to be more. Let's get rid of this. Save, and now if I refresh, more is going to take us to the latest year. Okay. Rather than the match page over here, I want to change this to something else. I want to say team name for the year. Okay. So um, let me go over here to the match page. Instead of having this be match page, this is going to be team name matches in year. That's fair. Right? I'm getting all the matches for the team for the year. I'm going to get the year from, yeah, year is already here with use params. So it should have the value there. Okay, there you go. This is this is better. It is going to show the matches for that. Maybe have this be a little bit lower. Okay, so I'm going to have class name equals page heading. And then in my page heading, I'm going to set margin bottom 20 pixels. Or actually, let me do margin as 20 pixels auto. Okay, that's better. So it's going to have margin on both sides and it has some spacing for it to breathe. Okay, cool. So we have a fairly good styled application. It's not perfect, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I just wanted you to get an idea of what it takes to kind of build something like this from the scratch and walk you through the process of how I style each individual element one by one. 
Um, I honestly welcome pull requests. So please give it a shot. Try out, first try out the status of the repo as it is when you're watching this and uh, see what improvements you can make to this thing, okay? To see all of the optimizations you can do. Maybe one thing you can do is add filters, right? This is a great uh, feature that you can add. You can say, okay, when you go to the matches page for a particular team, for example, um, let's go over here. Now you can possibly have a filter for like, okay, what are all the matches that Kolkata Knight Riders has played against Rajasthan Royals for this year? Okay, so you can probably have like a drop down or something like that and have it show filtering, okay? Or maybe all the one matches or all the one matches that they've lost. I think that's a great feature. So there are lots of ways you can, lots of places you can take this. So give it a shot. One other feature which would be cool to have is kind of like a, a starting page, which has like all of the all of the teams. So let's actually do that next. I'm gonna have like a grid with with all of the team names and get all the the names of the teams as an API. This should be fairly quick. So let's do that next.